So hello captains of Ambed welcome to the second episode of decoding football so if you are a football fan just like me and love to learn more from football personalities make sure to watch all of our videos and please subscribe to our channel to help us grow today along with us we have two professional coaches mr hoge reis and mr roshan rao to answer a few of your most asked question regarding football tactics so mr reis is a uefa pro coach and the author of tactical periodization Mr. Reis, glad to have you back. So, how have you been? Hi, hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sobanik. For me, it's a pleasure to to be here, exchanging with uh, all the people who can who can listen to us uh, through Armband podcasts and Armband YouTube channel. So, uh, I'm always open to exchange, and here with Mr. Roshan Rao, will for sure be a good opportunity for everyone to discuss on. some interesting topics about training and football game yeah. i will also like to convey our sincere thanks to mr reis for being with us today in this busy times it's a pleasure to have you on today's show and also we will like to welcome former riga united fc coach mr roshan rao so mr rao how have you been i've been yeah i've been a bit busy but it's a uh, it's a great opportunity to be here along with mr reis uh, brings a lot of experience and um, i'm happy to be involved in this discussion today and i'm sure it will be an interesting uh, like the topics which are on on the menu for today to discuss about i hopefully this show will be very fruitful for all the fans who are listening to our show but the first talking point or the first topic of today i will go to both of you starting with mr reis so what are tactics It's a it's a uh, quite open question uh, in the sense that um, uh, as other concepts uh, related with training and related with football, um, there's a lot of definitions uh, according to the uh, to the sources we are we are looking for or to uh, the theorists of of training and football. Um, so it is a concept that uh, as others uh, have been. Uh, suffering of a certain kind of um, universalization, as if there was only uh, one way to 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 play, one way to interact uh, throughout the game, uh, and that um, that's a concept that I I truly believe that should be uh, observed and reflected uh, in a more uh, specific way, according to the way of playing uh, and to the intentions behind. Uh, those interactions that we are um, uh, promoting to spend more time than others, uh, according to certain ideas, certain principles, certain concepts uh, that will guide um, that will guide the expressions of the players uh, in the field. Uh, so it is a a concept that we need to understand in this informational um, way related with way of playing. Uh, of its team and not as some uh, conceptions about training uh, have certain kind of uh, general principles of football. Like if there was a receipt about how to play, and uh, I think the richness of football is that we can see very diverse ways of playing, uh, being successful, and that's why it keeps the game so uh, interesting for the fans and so. open to all kinds of profiles of player and of profiles of ideas from the coach a brilliant explanation from mr reis i will go to mr roshan with the same question so what is tactics in football for you yeah i think it's uh, brilliantly uh, initiated by mr reis about tactics and it's a question which i'm sure in course of this discussion is just going to give a lot more um uh, light which had a lot more light on what exactly it is and for me it's uh, it's one of the the many components of the game and although from from a layman's point of view that's the first thing that they start with you know when you talk about what are tactics you just think about formations think about numbers but uh, as mr raised exactly put it's it's one of the many components when you talk about the philosophy of trying to play uh, which from which stems the game model from which stems the quality of the players and it also has a lot a lot to do with the with the cultural aspect of the of the team that you're playing for the the, the league that you're playing in the the stages the level of competition and all of these kind of shape uh, a team's tactic 
uh, in certain ways. So it's very hard to to explain in one simple word what tactics means, but I think it's a it's a byproduct of of of, of, uh, of a lot of uh, elements, and it's for me it's no means an end, but it's a it's a means of achieving a, a common goal for for any team. Football tactics can be defined in various ways. So there is no one particular way of saying what is tactics, but both of them have st in the stipulated time has given a various a very good explanation of what is tactics in football so now coming to another interesting question which has been said a lot of times in media and we have seen all the experts say this many times so i will go to mr reis with this one that is how do you perceive the phases of play in the football well um honestly i don't look uh, into the game as uh, divided in in phases as in uh, I understand that uh, from the theoretical point of view, uh, it can be a way for us uh, as a coaches and as a football analysts um, to look into different situations of the game and to kind of um, uh, organize uh, our sessions or our uh, um, reports about the game. Um, but uh, we need to understand the, the dynamic of the nature of a, a complex uh, phenomenon like game where everything is uh, connected with everything, uh, where there is absolutely any kind of separation between uh, parts. As in, uh, sometimes we, we saw um, references to this terminology of phases of play, like the first phase of construction, second phase of construction. Um, it is just a, a way, just a way to look at it. But um, for example, it can happen that you are talking about first phase, and then you see Ederson in Manchester City uh, doing a, a, a pass to Gabriel Jesus last season, or now to Allen. Um, and what's the, the first phase? Is fourth phase because they are already finishing. Um, needs to understand that. Uh, the game is a continuum where everything uh, happens in a dynamic way, non-linear. It is a non-linear phenomenon. If we tend to divide things, then we go to training also with this division. Uh, then we start, since the young ages, with this division, uh, creating artificial uh, context for, uh, for the player, for the human beings to develop. And I think that's not um, the best way to look at it. So, as Mr. Ray said, this is a very good explanation how the phases of play work because we always listen about the phase of play belonging to this team and this team and how the phase of play and the transition happens. So, this is one of the most lucid explanations about it. So, now coming to a very long, long debate which is happening in football, I will go to Mr. Rao on this one. What comes first in modern football? A coach's preferred structure or formation like Mr. Jurgen Klopp or Mr. Pep Guardiola. They have often said that the player must tweak into the system that the club has in place and then they will get the time to adjust and finally they will put in motion and the tactics of the coach or the structure comes in first. Or is the quality of the players which matters the most as we have seen in the era of both Sir Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger that they have tweaked the system a lot of times to accommodate certain players. So what comes first in today's modern football? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's also a question which cannot be answered very simply. Uh, but I believe that like a, mode of, a lot of coaches put it, you know, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a player's game. Yeah, the game is played by the by the players on the pitch. It's the players who make decisions uh, under the situations which they encounter in the game. And I see the game as uh, uh, I once heard from Raymond Bahain that the game is a representation of chaos. And uh, a coach's role is to try and find some order in the chaos. First and foremost outside of the pitch and then how his perception of this chaos is and then try to bring this order and 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 in, into the players so that their expressions on the pitch have a synonymity in in, in reaching a common goal uh, that having said uh for the for, from the coach's point of view a tactical framework is uh is a way a blueprint of achieving that that goal but it's impossible to do that without having the quality of 
of players to be able to execute the uh, a, a coach's idea, a philosophy of playing. So it's, uh, uh, I think, f- without having the players, when we when we talk about the players, there are so many aspects. Uh, you know, the the physical aspect, the mental aspect, the tactical aspect, psychological aspect. So without having uh, a players who are well defined from from all uh, from all angles, it's impossible to achieve. Uh, your particular organization that you're trying to achieve. So let's say you're in the coach's tactic, the coach's uh, philosophy of playing, he wants to play from the back. And this is the point which we mentioned earlier, that if you don't have the the ball playing, uh, the ball playing defenders from the back, if you don't have a keeper who is comfortable with the, with the ball at the feet and you don't have the right uh, quality of the pivot and and the midfielders who are able to identify uh, numerical superiority and be able to play out of the back under pressure, it's 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 hard to try and enforce your uh, your tactic of of trying to to play out from the back or trying to transition with the ball at the feet from the back, but struck out of play. So without having the the players to execute a certain tactic, it's impossible to talk about tactics alone so it's it's it, it it comes from the players that you have in your arsenal to be able to execute it because at the end of the day it's it's a player's game and the ball is at the for the feet of the players and the coach is only able to to try and and bring some sort of, sort of synonymity to to what they're, what they're trying to do on the pitch so it is a brilliant explanation that yes the structure of a coach matters but it helps when you have that certain quality of players to bring in what the tactics the team is trying to play so I will just add another point and will raise a question to Mr. Reis on this one. So we have seen Mr. Robert Lewandowski once said that the team actually practices the structure and the phases of play so much in the training that it just comes great on the field. So in this regard, Mr. Reis, what do you believe are the essence of formation and structures in modern football? Well, um... I believe that, uh, as, as Mr. Roshan mentioned, uh, we need to look into the game as a, as a, as a chaotic phenomenon where we are looking to um, uh, generate some, uh, uh, some order on, on this chaos to, to bring uh, the deterministic um, uh, tendencies and deterministic patterns into this, into this chaos. So uh, the, the structures are... Uh, a way for us from the geometric point of view to give to the players some uh, comfort, uh, some references uh, where they can uh, through those distributions that uh, that the structures um, uh, promote uh, feel um, uh, more comfortable to anticipate where the teammates may, may be uh, to to play uh, to play faster in that in that way as they will have this um, um, this safety zone this um, um, this comfort uh, brought through these habits that that are a consequence of of training and playing uh, in a certain in a certain structure but uh, we need to understand that the structure uh, is something that should be uh, observed and understood just as a starting point, not uh, from the static point of view. We are confusing static with static. The game is, the game is dynamic and those initial positions, um, as, as, the, as the, the terminology of complex systems uh, help us to understand, are um, uh, these complex phenomena are high, have high sensitivity to initial conditions. So these uh, structures, uh, by themselves, they promote uh, uh, certain exploration of certain spaces. Um, so that uh, that's why uh, we need to understand well our players and uh, guide them into into moving in certain areas more than others. So they will take. Uh, they will take the advantage of it and they will, uh, for the other side, uh, be more able to hide uh, the less developed uh, abilities uh, through those, uh, through this balance that, um, that the, the structure may allow them. Um, 
uh, at the same time at the same time uh, we need to understand um, like some uh, some coaches used to say that uh, uh, the tactics are the players we need to understand that uh, a one four three three uh, is different from other one four two three three because the players will be different uh, it's not the same thing to have your only midfielder uh, being busquet and or having um, I don't know, for example, Gattuso, uh, for sure, the dynamics that will uh, uh, emerge from these players, even if the structure is the same, uh, will be different. So uh, we need always to find uh, context and uh, dynamics uh, for these human relations to be, uh, to be effective for the whole collective. There are various concepts which happens in the essence of formation and structures in modern football. But I will just ask a same question on a different topic about that is, as we have earlier discussed with Mr. Rao, that a freedom of a player do sometimes gets hampered due to structure, but you have to depend on the structure, but you also have to give freedom to a player. So what do coaches mean by freedom of a player, especially when most of the modern coaches expect the footballers to play the game in their way? Because in Earlier times, we have seen Mr. Sam Alidash when he, he was in Bolton. Though, despite of having a defensive structure, his team offensively used to rely on the particular player and his set of expertise. And then the team would matter and the team would play according to the strengths of the player. So, what do you think about the freedom of player in today's time when the coaches do want to get the things in their own way? I think uh, it comes to the similar question, which also is quite debated in, in, in the in the coaching realm, uh, whether you know unopposed training versus opposed training. I think, in in, in my opinion, uh, freedom of the player at the end of the day, there is a certain when you talk about a football action, what the the way the player perceives the game, the way a player uh, comprehends the game, understands the game, uh, makes a decision. Uh, executes the decision. I mean, when you, when you think of this this whole logical sequence of action, for me, a freedom of the freedom that a player has is the ability to be able to make the right decisions. And and when when the player is able to make the right decisions and many able to find multiple solutions from given problems uh, when it comes to the tactical structures that uh, a player is presented with, either a player is presented with. At an individual level, or the entire team is presented with, uh, then the coach is able to find success in in achieving the same game model. So, when when you talk about having a rigid structure, that this is uh, there are no two situations in the game that are exactly the same. Uh, you may go through similar sequences and, and identify similar patterns, but there are no two situations that are similar uh, that are exactly the same. So, when a coach tries to enforce a certain way of playing a tactical structure, that okay, let's say I want to build out with a four-two-three-one, and uh, uh, and I want to try to switch the ball, I want to try to 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 build through the center, go through the half spaces. The freedom of a player is able to find out solutions regardless of the problems that they face on the field. Positional freedom is one of them. There are other kinds of freedom that the player has to be able to to assume other positions, and, and then and we talk about the logical relationship between different players. But it's 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 quite complex to explain the freedom of a player, and it's quite debated when you talk about a, a formation that has that has multiple uh, problems, and then and players present with different solutions to these. So each player has a different solution to it. But at the end of the day. Uh, every player should be oriented with the common goal of 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 trying to the, the philosophy of, that that we are trying to achieve through our game model, and then within that philosophy, uh, the player is able to take initiative and find solutions to the problems that are given. So for me, the freedom of a player is is the ability for them to find multiple solutions to given problems in a situation and be able to to select the most efficient way of solving the problem which ultimately leads to the common team-oriented goal of achieving the, game's philosophy, uh, the game model's philosophy. So, Mr. Reyes, I will just ask you another question on this topic. And it involves both the teams which prefers positional style of play and the others who are placed in more of a counter-attacking way. That is, how do you help the players understand the concept of space occupation and of the ball movement better? 
Um, well, that's um, uh, that's a, a process, of course. Uh, that can be we can be talking about a, a season in a context of a professional level, the more more than one season, or uh, a lot of years through the since the the off level till the till the professionals. Um, this process of um, uh, learning the game uh, of uh, uh, perceiving the, the spaces, perceiving what happened with the game comes um, mostly through the experience uh, in the field, for the training sessions, for the, um, for the not so much the, the theoretical knowledge, but the practical uh, uh, experience with the, the body in the, in the here and now and feeling uh, the advantages of being positioned in certain zones and uh, in certain spaces uh, more than others, if uh, receiving with the body um, oriented in a certain way uh, and others. And that, that's not... Um, some, sometimes people think that uh, the coach needs to be telling him every, everything, what happened and stopping training and explaining, but uh, it, will be, it will be more... Uh, uh, a more rich process uh, if uh, the coach is uh, and understands his role more uh, as a generator of contexts that need to be of course competitive and need to demand the emotional uh, implication of the players uh, and then that by themselves uh, they will gradually adjust because uh, the nature of human being is always um, to is a competitive nature and is a nature that is always aiming to be the most success, successful uh, possible in the situations. So they will uh, gradually regulate themselves, they will um, then here and now uh, uh, in a certain moment of course the coach will be uh, uh, asking questions, will be trying to develop a certain intentionality according to what they do, but not uh, limiting uh, the possibilities of the players to what the coach knows about football because this will be very uh, uh, limitative about the possibilities of the of each uh, player we have in, in front of us so uh, it's more about to understand if they have intention behind what they are doing and understanding now that understanding also that everything may be possible in the game there is not the correct answer for each situation, as Mr. Rocha uh, also mentioned. Uh, so what we need to understand and we need to be open is to, uh, to try first to observe uh, and try to find the reason for what they are doing. And then, uh, if we are not able to, to understand it, making questions and develop gradually that intentionality uh, in what they are doing. So another interesting point that the intention of how you want to play comes also in this matter within the part of this part of football where you talk about the space occupation and off the ball movement because the intention and how you want to play becomes very important so everyone who is watching our show please subscribe to our channel so that we can bring you more content like this on our channel so now i will go to mr rao with a very with a very interesting question because this is said a lot of times by professional coaches in the press conferences as well in their books and everything and i have also asked this question to a lot of coaches and i will ask like to ask you this one what is game model we hear a lot about game model of a particular coach so what is the game model for you yeah this is a very interesting question because from from my, from my level of experience in the beginning i was confronted with this with this question a lot and when i started off as a as a, as a coach uh, having having no background uh, a lot of experienced coaches uh, emphasized on the same aspect over and over again that they asked me the same question all the time what is your game model and how would you define your game model and, and in the beginning it was quite confounding for me because it was hard for me to to say uh, in words what my game model was because uh, and then they asked what's your idea of the game how do you want to play the game and then when uh, as, as, as an absolute beginner when someone has asked this question your thoughts only go back to to what you think is the ideal way to play the game are you 
as, as, as from your personality are you pragmatic or are you more aesthetic and then based on based on your experience as it develops over the game you somehow come across the game model so for me over time what i've learned and it is a process of still evolution which is it's, it's, i'm still learning about of what exactly i want to do on the pitch and how what my game model dictates but as a as in general game model is basically it has to start off with the philosophy of how you want to play the game the intentionality that you want to do in the game and then from that set a set of principles that you want the players to enforce on a collective and individual level and from these principles stem sub principles that the players need to execute in attack in defense when they're without the ball when they're with the ball and then from these sub principles generate structures and uh, and each in each individual phases of the game or each individual uh, spaces on the pitch the way in which players react to situations is 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 a bit more uh, uh, extrapolated but like we discussed earlier the game is uh, presented as a set of chaos and uh, from the second question how we perceive the faces of the play uh, coaches or coaching literature uh, says that dividing the game into certain phases helps make the comprehension of the game easier so when we divide the game into certain phases it just helps our comprehension of the game doesn't mean it's the right way to go or doesn't mean that the game is all about you know very hard rigid compartmentalized phases but it makes our comprehension of the game better and then once you have a comprehension of what I want to do in attack, what I want to do when I have the ball, then you generate, then you try to go more and more detailed, more and more uh, uh, intricately into what I want to do when I have the ball in this part of the pitch, uh, what I want to do when I have the ball uh, in the center of the pitch or, uh, or at the back when, when my keeper has the ball. And and, and and that's how you basically generate and, and build upon uh, your game model. But at the end of the day, even at an individual level or at the collective level of the team, or even as a project as a whole, which the club generates, it's all about a philosophy of how you want to, to play the game. Another interesting part, which is about game model, and it's how game model perceives and how game model changes over time. It's a question I will go to you both, starting with Mr. Reis. How do you mix technique with tactics? Because we have seen earlier in last season when both where cost came in, Burnley, Burnley were more of a team who believed in playing long balls and not much of a technicality, but rather they believed in the positional and aerial supremacy. So as a result, Mr. Booth where cost couldn't settle that much in Burnley, and so he got a loan and now he's back at Manchester United. So I will go ask this question to Mr. Reis. How do you mix technique with tactics? Well, I, honestly, I don't need to, to mix it as, as they are already mixed. Uh, techniques are a, are a way to express the, the, the tactics. So uh, that's why we, uh, I conceived the, this problematic of technique as a um, tactical technical um, um, aspect of that, um, that we have also to take in consideration in the way that we uh, approach this uh, said technical development. Uh, this always to be in a context where uh, the, the key point will be the precision of what they are doing and the effectiveness. Uh, it's not, uh, we should not look at football as, as maybe uh, can happen with other sports um, where there is a, a strict and a rigid uh, way to execute certain um, certain movements or certain skills. Uh, no, what the in the in football is a is a is an open sport where um, uh, um, we need, as we said, as we, as we discussed before, uh, need to have intentionality in what they are, not what we are doing, what the players are doing, uh, with a certain goal. Then the context. Um, need to be representative, representative of the of the logic of the game uh, itself. So they uh, gradually will attune with the different um, uh, components that they are interacting with, uh, and they will, uh, as we talk, uh, by their nature, uh, find their own way uh, to execute 
uh, the different uh, the different interactions that they are in, uh, that they want to to do to be successful in the situations uh, and this process of um, uh, uh, auto organization in this motor level um, needs to be needs to be understood. Uh, um, uh, I believe uh, uh, with this sensi uh, sensibility to don't uh, cut uh, the variability, uh, to don't cut these uh, uh, less expected uh, ways of uh, expression of certain players, like for example in Portugal. Uh, Quaresma, for example, became very popular because the way of him, uh, that he was uh, used to shoot and to cross with outside of his foot. Uh, and uh, as, he, as he mentioned sometimes, he had some coaches that uh, when he, wa he was young told him, hey, no, we, we, we shoot with this part, we, we, we cross with this part of the foot. And uh, uh, fortunately, <laughs> he, he didn't uh, pay too much attention to these um, advices. But there's, there's very present this kind of of thinking about football. Even Romario uh, was an amazing uh, finisher with the, the point uh, of, his, of his foot. And um, uh, if, we lo if you go to certain training sessions of young players, we hear a lot of coaches say, no, you don't use this part because it doesn't allow you to, be, uh, to have precision on your actions. And uh, uh, I think it's a, a very uh, negative way uh, to to be uh, leading with the, with the off development and well in football in general. Yeah. Like uh, Mr. H man mentioned, uh, absolutely, it just reminds me of uh, one of the sayings by Paco Cerullo, where he mentioned that football is unique in a sport in the way that uh, a problem is presented to a player as an individual, and he or she has to generate movements that are unique to that particular situation which uh, can probably be influenced by the number of times or the experience that the player has in the similar situations before, but it's not going to be exactly the same. So it's, I have to almost generate a new movement to, to, a, to a situation. And this is why it's difficult to, to, to separate technic, uh, technical and tactical aspect of the game. So first and foremost, the philosophy in which you are trying to play the... Uh, the intentionality of the player and from that generates the adaptation of the of the player so like uh, mr Ray mentioned uh, trivella was probably for an individual an adaptation to solve a particular problem with a certain goal for the player which we see right now as as technique and so when 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 we define technique uh, we we think of that's that's also very varied. You know, for some person, technique may be different from the other person, and we see technical player as maybe someone who is able to dribble with the ball at the feet. But for the player uh, themselves, him or her, they find technique as an adaptation to the problem that they are facing, and this adaptation comes from from the training, from from the exposure that they have had. Uh, you know, I, I remember also from along the lines of uh, tactical periodization, which uh, Mourinho quoted that if you want to 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 play the uh, the piano and you need to train playing the piano, you cannot train by running around the piano. So uh, that's the same same thing in 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 the game. The the um, the education, uh, football education that the player has been exposed to, whether it's playing on the street. Um, like Roy've talked about, uh, the street players were, were the best technical players because of the adaptations that they had to do to, in order to survive as a good player on the street. Or uh, in, in Romario, as an example, a lot of the Brazilian players are exposed to, to futsal at a young age. So their uh, technique is, a result, is an adaptation to the, to the conditions in which they grew up. And so this sort of culture which uh, the players are exposed to in their development phase uh, eventually shapes what we call their technical profile. And then when we expose them at a higher level where they're supposed to adapt to a, a, a tactical framework uh, dictated by the coach, it's the solutions that they try to generate from the tactical problems in the game, which 
all of them are together. We cannot separate them. And so for me, it's not just what the player does with the ball on the feet, uh, with the ball when the player has the ball at the feet that is technical, but also what the player does without the ball is also for me is also technical uh, aspects which you which you see on the pitch because they probably for, for us for the for the common person we only tend to watch the ball, but for the player they see the game they see the spaces they see the the intentionality and then for me that's why in in a certain game in certain philosophy in a certain culture a player may be deemed technical but you take the player out of that context to another uh, uh another environment and they would probably be not not be technical so it's 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 for me both of them are quite intertwined it's just, just two examples that i think will uh, be helpful for uh, people who is uh, listening um Pelé, uh, you know brazilian striker uh, uh, he used it to say Oh, I control so, the ball so well because when I was young, uh, my street had more holes than the other streets. Uh, so uh, all the time the ball, when he was playing in the street, was bouncing, was uh, having different trajectories and it required uh, the best uh, flexibility, the best uh, uh, adaptability from, from his body to control the ball in uh, such... Uh, uh, random uh, environment where uh, all the all the the trajectories were so unpredictable so uh, i believe in training uh, we need to have this idea of uh, creating conditions for the players uh, to have diversity on their solutions and that would be uh, only possible with the open scenarios with the open environments where variability uh, is present and uh, where uh, by constraining it differently uh, in some days and uh, and the others, uh, we will be stimulating this uh, adaptability of our players. And uh, the other the other example comes from a teammate of Pele called Garincha. Uh, he had one leg shorter than other, uh, and uh, uh, for some people it may be a problem. And oh. It's, individual cannot play football but for him it was a great advantage uh, as it was uh, a quite unpredictable uh, pattern of movement for the opponents and he was very very successful uh, on the 1v1 situations for example and then in a certain moment uh, other federations in that time uh, for example russia uh, they developed a program a program to develop uh, players able to simulate the way Garincha dribbled and that was not uh, successful because even if they can simulate the movement they don't have the timings they don't have the story that his body has doing these uh, these movements with the way the, that uh, uh, the body moves that is naturally different on each one of us so we need to understand this uh, very individual and very contextual with a story behind on each one of us. If you allow me to to start, uh, Mr. Reis, on the on the last point which you which you mentioned, I think uh, I, I, it's something that uh, that I think about a lot. That in mo in modern football and in modern coaching, are we uh, mechanizing players a lot because we are exposing them to the, the same constraints and we are judging them to almost the same pattern so we are creating more mechanized players as opposed to uh, in the development phase as in the past when players developed playing in different conditions on the streets on the beach which we are losing right now because we tend to become a more mechanized factory model where we're having academies and all the players exposing to the same conditions the same concepts so what do you think about uh, uh, the development of player in today's yeah i that's a great uh, great point i, I really uh, believe that we, we should have as, a, as example uh, what story uh, show us and story show us that in the past uh, in the 60s in the 70s uh, we had a lot more uh, top level players in the same teams uh, now top teams have won two great players um, which, and even national teams uh, if we look at that, those times, uh, the amount of uh, 
quality player that uh, were able to have quite diverse uh, solutions, quite diverse, divergent thinking um, was uh, very more significative. And that came uh, absolutely, uh, I believe, from this uh, environment of street football that was not about not only about the 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 time of playing football in this uh, uh, open uh, environment but all the nature of this uh, street play that uh, allowed them to have more uh, autonomy to have more developed their motricity on their bodies doing different activities uh, 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 all day long and now uh, nowadays uh, we have a, a very structured shell, uh, shadow for our um, uh, for the young people uh, that have a long time seated uh, in the classrooms then they have the, the agenda to go to the English lessons or the, uh, the football activity by one hour three times a week and that's uh, um, that's a very uh, uh, limitative uh, condition that comes from the, the social uh, and cultural uh, environment that the, the society uh, evolved to and that uh, um, that's not the, the more beneficial uh, evolution for the, the for the consequence that it has on the on the human being in terms of the uh, an al motor an alphabetism that we we see nowadays in in kids uh, with 10 11 years old that uh, uh, have quite significant uh, problems to to do simple uh, simple movements with their with their bodies and uh, uh, looking to that we need to as much as much as possible uh, as much as possible to bring uh, this environment into the training sessions this uh, street football this free play uh, into the training sessions with all the ingredients that it has um, knowing that uh, we will we'll never be uh, exactly the same but uh, if at least we understand how beneficial it was we will tend to um, to recreate this, uh, this atmosphere and these contexts uh, uh, and um, as, we, as you were saying, this, uh, this would be also uh, uh, important to understand that uh, uh, football development uh, and uh, the off development uh, for the players that start playing since a very uh, early age um, should not be oriented by the, the early specialization, but uh, more with the, uh, the logic of uh, specificity that. Uh, should be okay football uh, as a main activity but having uh, other uh, activities to explore the um, uh, the openness of their possibilities and not to reduce them into uh, into the, the specialization of a of a certain uh, activity uh, and that's that's why i, I used to have um, to make reference to some authors like uh, David Epstein with the book uh, Range that uh, allowed us to see how much uh, uh, wide range of um, very variable activities in young ages can contribute to later uh, have a possibility to connect different areas, uh, different um, uh, different ideas, different uh, uh, activities, uh, even from the motor uh, point of view. So, captains. That was all for today. We need to end our session here. Thanks, Mr. Reis and Mr. Rao for being with us today. To all of our viewers, thanks a lot for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more such insightful decoding football episodes like this. So until then, it's goodbye from our band.